This AI model has solved a problem thought to be impossible, or at least decades away from being solved, proving countless scientists wrong. And the results could mean revolutionary changes in cancer treatment, or even possibly in climate change. It has to do with the way that proteins work, which unless you're in biology or medicine is probably a foreign topic. The word gets thrown around in all sorts of contexts. Are you guys talking about protein? I love protein. But that doesn't matter. All you need to know about proteins is that they are incredibly important to virtually every process that your body carries out. Yet just like many things in biology, proteins are a little bit of an unexplored territory. That is, until now. Thanks to AI, we've now unlocked the ability to better understand and predict the patterns of proteins, meaning endless new possibilities in the world of biotech. Over the past couple of months, I've spent endless hours researching the world of proteins, all in hopes to show you how this project could better the lives of you, me, and the entire world. So to talk about how we could develop cancer-fighting proteins, we have to start with a little bit of context. You see, proteins are actually insane. The amount of shapes that they can form themselves into is astronomical. To put things into frame, people have been trying to better understand these protein configurations for more than 50 years, somewhat unsuccessfully. See, they're made of amino acids, and there are 20 amino acids that you can chain together in any order. So as you can imagine, the possibilities expand quickly. Let's say we have a chain of three amino acids acids. That's already 8,000 possible combinations, but we're not done there. You can then take multiple chains of amino acids and bond them together, making an entirely different type of protein. And that protein can then fold itself into different forms in order to carry out specific tasks. For example, here's an educational video of someone building the structure of insulin. Insulin is the protein involved in regulating our body's energy supply and blood sugar levels, and its composition of amino acids is structured to do exactly that. Its two chains are folded together in a specific structure that allows it to properly function. If the chains were oriented in any other way, it wouldn't fit into its receptor and could not trigger the process of maintaining our blood sugar levels. This folding is a key insight into understanding diseases like diabetes and cancer because that's how all proteins are. Are. They're folded perfectly for the task at hand, a key for a lock, but they're not just any ordinary key. Imagine if you had a magic key that could adjust its grooves to match any lock. Millions of doors are now unlockable because of this one key. That's a pretty powerful key, and that's why proteins are pretty damn powerful as well. Only with a protein, we're not talking millions of keyholes that the protein can change shape for. We're talking many, many more. Let's take the entire timeline of the universe and place it on one line. That's 13 billion years right there. And now let's take a protein and have it fold into the configurations available to it. Let it shift into shapes constantly every day over the age of the entire universe. Now, even if you attempted millions of configurations per day, you still wouldn't be done with the possible combinations of that one protein. That's because any given protein can theoretically adopt somewhere around 10 to the 300th different configurations. As we just demonstrated, that's an insane amount of structures. Yet somehow, each protein spontaneously folds into one specific shape and carries out its task accordingly. Out of all those combinations, it knows what shape to pick. How crazy is that? But why do we care about protein folding? How does this relate to cancer and diseases? Well, let me show you. This is ataxin-1. There's something different about this ataxin-1 though. It's folded improperly. It's supposed to look like this. And the gradual increase in misfolded ataxin-1 actually leads to Alzheimer's. If we could better understand the folding of this protein, as well as what causes it to misfold, we could better understand Alzheimer's and possibly come up with a cure. But remember, ataxin-1 has enough possible structures to last you more than 13 billion years of trial and error. It's no wonder that this puzzle was thought to be many decades away from a solution. It's an astronomical task to predict protein shape. And yet, AI did it. We have been stuck on this one problem. How do proteins fold up? If we can reliably predict protein structures using AI, that could change the way we understand the natural world. A deep mind machine learning program called AlphaFold. By AlphaFold? AlphaFold. Meet AlphaFold, an AI project created by DeepMind. It's an artificial intelligence company working under Google. And in 2020, DeepMind entered into this competition, CASP. It's an event held every year to see how well teams around the world can predict protein shapes. Teams are given 
given a set of amino acid sequences and they have to do their best to determine what the corresponding protein might look like in 3D space. By the time the competition begins, the judges have already mapped out the answers, but they did so using traditional painstakingly slow techniques. The teams must come up with software solutions that can do the same, but at a quicker pace. And whoever can match their predictions to the actual model most closely wins first place. Now before AlphaFold, a winning score was somewhere around 40% accuracy. But in 2020, AlphaFold blew everyone out of the water with an accuracy score of 92%. Some structures were so close that the margin of error was the size of an atom. They correctly guessed certain amino acid sequences so perfectly that out of thousands of atoms, only a single atom was slightly out of place. In other structures where the DeepMind team was farther off, the judges noted that they weren't sure if that was because AlphaFold's model was off or if their estimate of the protein structure was off. For the first time, the judges didn't just award a team first place, they also declared the protein folding problem solved. But how did DeepMind do it? By the way, if you don't care about how AlphaFold works and you'd rather skip to the part where we talk about the amazing things that we'll be able to do with it, you can go to the timestamp on the screen. Okay, so what was so different about AlphaFold that allowed it to create a gap like this between them and the competition? Well, it starts with evolution. You see, we've mapped out a massive collection of protein structures within us and other species, 170,000 different protein structures. By assessing this collection and paying attention to other species and the evolution of their bodily functions, we can get hints to where amino acids might end up in a structure. If an amino acid is in a particular spot across species, there's likely a reason for it to be there. For example, if an amino acid is hydrophilic, meaning it loves water, they are shown to be consistently on the outside of a protein, since proteins are often surrounded by water. But if it's hydrophobic, it's more likely to be in the middle of the protein. Now, what if we zoomed out our scope just one more index? What if we looked at amino acid pairs? Let's say you have two chains of amino acids. You can line one chain up at the top of a grid and one to the left. And then for each pair, you assess the massive collection of existing proteins again, but this time you look at every time these two amino acids are together. So based off of that, you now have another chart of potential positional data for the protein structure. Okay, so now you've got data on previous protein structures. Doesn't every team have that? Well, yeah, so this is where AI comes into play. Machine learning is really good at taking an existing collection of data and then guessing how that data might be used to predict the creation of something new. Just think of ChatGPT. It's been taught all of the written text found on the internet. Now it does a pretty good job at predicting the sentences, bullet points, and essays that you ask of it. The same thing can be done with protein structures. You can teach a model to somewhat understand protein structures and then ask it to try and build new proteins from chains of amino acids that it's never seen before. And as you give it feedback, it marginally improves over time. Now you've got a system that can more accurately construct proteins better than any human has in the past. But now where does that leave us? Sure, this all sounds great on paper. AlphaFold solved a ridiculously hard problem, but how could it actually yield benefits to you, me, and society? Well, in absolutely incredible ways, mind-boggling ways. One of the most immediately obvious ways that this could be revolutionary is in designing synthetic proteins. Let's say this box represents all of the natural proteins known to us. Well then, this grid represents all of the possible proteins that we could theoretically construct. The natural proteins that do exist have been structured a particular way over millions of years and are really good at one particular task. But nowadays, we're living longer, which has revealed new diseases. Diseases that no natural protein is properly designed to deal with. Why don't we build synthetic proteins today that can help us better human lives in the near future? For example, let's talk about this equation. What do you think that this might mean? We're talking about proteins a lot, so you probably worked out that these are proteins, but what's exactly going on? Well, this right here is a protein from the respiratory virus RSV, and this is what scientists call a host receptor protein. When you combine the two, you get a vaccine that creates a much stronger vaccine response than any of the other vaccines that have been tested, aka you get a better vaccine. RSV is one of the leading causes of infant mortality worldwide. This protein alone could save millions of lives. But now look at this protein, because this could be even more revolutionary. Looks similar, right? Only this protein is made up of several virus proteins. And in this case, these are flu viruses from around the world, meaning you could create a universal vaccine, a vaccine that could target multiple strands of a virus at once. 
It could be administered once and never needed again for an entire lifetime. But this technology could be used for much more serious diagnoses as well, like cancer. One of the biggest issues with cancer is the fact that you can't target cancer cells specifically. To better explain this, let's take a trip to the bone marrow. This is what healthy bone marrow looks like. These are baby blood cells growing and dividing. These cells go on to carry oxygen from your lungs to the rest of your body. But with chemo, the bone marrow begins to look more and more like this. And the damage doesn't stop at bone marrow. This widespread form of treatment can cause permanent damage to the heart, lungs, nerves, and kidneys. But with custom designed proteins, we could deliver chemotherapy directly to the cancer tumor, avoiding the hardship that every chemotherapy patient currently has to go through. Another frustrating thing about cancer is treatment that works for one person may not work for another. But now, de novo protein design could change the game. De novo proteins are synthetic proteins designed with abilities not normally found in natural proteins. They're easy to manufacture, have new functions, and are tunable to specific cases. This means that we could create custom drugs or strategies for different kinds of patients, possibly creating much higher success rates for treatments of serious diseases like cancer. And finally, let's zoom out of the human body and travel to the ocean. I'm sure you can guess what that patch is. That's the collection of plastics in the ocean. An estimated 50 to 75 trillion pieces of microplastics are in the ocean today. Microplastics in humans have already been found to heighten stress, cause weight gain, increase risk of cancer, and disrupt reproductive development. But now, because of protein design, we could have a solution. And it all starts with this animal, a strawberry anemone. Scientists took a defense protein called Fragacea toxin C, or Frag C, from within this anemone. It's a porous protein used to filter toxins, meaning it's a perfect base for a protein capable of breaking down plastic. Let me show you why. See, if you take Frag C and attach just three amino acids, you get an artificial protein that can degrade microplastics and nanoplastics, allowing them to be broken down or recycled. And since they're porous, you could place these proteins in existing desalination plants. This would allow these proteins to automatically eliminate the plastic particles that are currently making their way into some of our water supply. And all of this was only possible with the innovation provided by AlphaFold. It gave us the ability to predict and model things like the anemone-based proteins, the plastic-eating amino acids, and the combination of the two. Now with a little bit more time, we could have a viable solution to the microplastics problem, responsible for some of the decline of our health. And these exciting advancements are really just the beginning. This technology has the potential to revolutionize how scientists approach biology and medicine. There are endless possibilities that this technology could help us reach. And in this video, we've really only scratched the surface. So keep an eye out for the next revolutionary protein advancement. It's coming sooner than you think.